Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to our five perfect days in New York. Started by flying at 11 o'clock in the morning from Heathrow to JFK with BA. Please do remember to like and subscribe to the channel so that we can keep bringing you more videos. We landed about two o'clock in the afternoon and then we got an Uber straight to our hotel. So we were staying in the Double Tree by Hilton Times Square West. Once we got there, we quickly went upstairs got showered, got changed, and then went out for our first day in New York. We started by going straight down to the Empire State Building. We walked from the hotel. You walk into the bottom of the Empire State Building into this lovely lobby area, which then takes you into the next point where you can get the lift to go upstairs. Please do remember to book your time slot. We booked ours to make sure that we were there sort of just as the sun went down, which is a slightly more expensive time, but it means we get some fantastic views from the Empire State Building. So once you've got to this level, you're able then to go outside where you get uninterrupted panoramic view of New York City. From there, we then walked back into Times Square, had some dinner, and then went off to bed ahead of our first full day or second day in New York. On the same street as our hotel there was the pub called The Beer Authority which I have to say we spent many an evening in and was really really good. A nice selection of beer and spirits. So then moving on to day two we got the subway all the way down to the south of Manhattan to jump on the Statue of City Cruises to go over to the Statue of Liberty. Now we booked our tickets probably three months in advance which meant that we were able to get tickets to go and climb the pedestal. Now we couldn't get tickets to climb the crown, they're very limited, but we did get tickets to see the pedestal. And we got the first trip of the day over to the Statue of Liberty which was great. And as you can see, lovely weather which meant that the top deck of the ferry was really busy although I would say the ferries are really busy anyway so make sure you get there with enough time. So when you book your tickets to go and see the Statue of Liberty the ticket that you book isn't necessarily the time of the ferry that you're going to get so if you get a ticket to view the pedestal at say 11 o'clock in the morning then you can get whatever ferry you want over to the Statue of Liberty Island and so when we got there we just went over and started to have breakfast as we hadn't had anything to eat that day so far. So as you walk off the pontoon, then to the right, you've got the gift shop and main cafe area. And I'd say, for the US, the food here was reasonably good. Now while there are lifts when you get into the pedestal building, I would say that it, the stairs are not for the faint-hearted. You're also not allowed to take with you any rucksacks or water etc so just bear that in mind but the views when you get up there are exceptional and we're looking out towards the Statue of Liberty Museum. You've of course got your uninterrupted view over to Ellis Island from the Statue of Liberty as well and further on towards Manhattan. Being a fantastic day in May there's obviously a lot of water traffic out on Hudson River as well. There's your Statue of Liberty Museum which we did go around and I would recommend that you spend 15-20 minutes just walking around, particularly because it's nice and air conditioned. So after that we jumped back on the ferry and we went over to Ellis Island. So just a little fact on the Statue of Liberty, it was originally gifted to the United States of America by the French and is made out of copper which is why when it's oxidised it's gone that green colour. So now we're at Ellis Island. Ellis Island was of course the first place that you had arrived when emigrating to the United States and so you walk into the main area and you've got all this information about the different halls etc that you can walk around they explain all the different blocks including obviously things like the hospital block and where they would do your initial assessments and eventually where you would then get allowed out and then back to the mainland. We quickly discovered then for lunch that nowhere in America is complete without an Irish bar. So we went to O'Hara's for lunch, which was really nice. Before then leaving and walking out to the 9-11 Memorial, which was a remarkable experience and just really harrowing. Whilst this may be one of the more expensive museums that we visited whilst in America, 
I would strongly recommend that you go there. There's a lot of information and a lot of history and I don't want to put too much in the video because I think it's important that you see it for yourself. But it gives you an idea of the foundations and the museum is built under where the Twin Towers were. Once we were finished in the museum to get back to the hotel we walked into the mall which is right next to the New World Trade Centre and then hopped on the subway and made it back up to the Doubletree by Hill in Times Square West before going out for dinner. Now for dinner that night we were very lucky to get into the highly coveted Centurion restaurant by American Express at One Vanville. So it's an amazing building, you go straight in the elevator up to the floor for the Centurion, walk out and they project this Centurion logo in light onto the ground. Turn one direction you walk out to the bar which has got this incredible glass which the further away you stand from the window the bigger the Chrysler building seems. And then when you approach the bar you can see the Chrysler building feels like a normal sort of size but absolutely uninterrupted views out over the city. The food in the Centurion was good, it wasn't absolutely fantastic but it was good and I would definitely go there again but what really did it for us was the views and from the restaurant side you've got again uninterrupted views over to the Empire State Building as well. After then we walked out walked towards Central Station and just went in and had a quick look around Central Station as it's one of those places that you must visit while you're in New York. Of course made famous not only by its amazing ceilings and being kind of one of the main hubs aside from Penn Station but also for its appearance in the Madagascar film. Once we'd finished taking a look around here we just got in a taxi and headed back to the Beer Authority, had a beer and then went to bed ahead of day three. So day three started just as busy as day one and day two did for us, trying to get as much into our holiday as possible. We'd heard from some American friends that Chelsea Market was a great stop, so we went down there for breakfast using the subway. Had a lovely bagel in one of the small little cafes at Chelsea Market before walking out and seeing Little Island. Now this wasn't intentional that we saw Little Island, but as it was there as we left Chelsea Market, we had a look before walking up the west side of Manhattan up towards the pier where you can get the Circle Line Cruise from. Now the Circle Line Cruise, there's a few different options. We got the lower half Landmarks Cruise which takes about an hour and a half and shows you a lot of what you want to see and a lot of the famous sites from New York as well. One really really good tip for when booking these Circle Line Cruises is if it's a hot or a sunny day make sure you book the ticket that allows you to get a reserved inside seat because it gets busy and it gets very hot up on the top deck. So this particular Circle Line cruise takes you past One World Trade Center, past the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island, then up South Street Southport to the Brooklyn Bridge, the Manhattan Bridge, the Williamsburg Bridge, and then turns round and goes back the same way. So after finding a cosy little pub or Irish bar for lunch, we then went over to the Intrepid Museum, which as it was Memorial Day or Memorial Weekend, was obviously super busy. There was some foreign aircraft carriers there as well, which were allowing people the chance to look around, which was really interesting. So the Intrepid is an aircraft carrier, and as you walk around the top deck, you've got all of these aircraft that you can walk around, and then you're able to go into the lower parts of the aircraft carrier and take a look as well. Here's just one of the examples of a parade they put on, whether these are on regularly or not I'm not sure. We've also then got one of the United States spacecraft as well and the Intrepid Museum that you can walk around and a whole space exhibition as well. Going through the spacesuit different spacecraft and other space memorabilia. And that's it for day three. Now on to day four. So day four started with us getting the subway up to 86th Street and walking to the upper west side where we had a lovely breakfast. That then meant that we could literally cross over into Central Park, have a look at the big reservoir, the Jacqueline Kennedy 
Reservoir and then start walking down through Central Park towards Fifth Avenue. So being a Sunday, Central Park is always busy anyway, but with fantastic weather and being Memorial Weekend, there were of course more people out and about and exploring and playing ball games, etc. So there's loads to see in Central Park. You could literally spend days walking around if you wanted to, but the views are amazing. And to be honest, you have no idea that you're really still in New York when you're in Central Park. It's quite an incredible place. You've of course got the vibrant street performers throughout parts of Central Park as well, including this lovely area with the water feature. We didn't go to Central Park Zoo, but I believe that's really good. But based on how much time we had in New York, we figured we could go to zoos elsewhere. Of course, New York and Fifth Avenue is famous for its shopping. So after reaching the south's most southerly point of Central Park, we had just had a wander down Fifth Avenue, which is where we saw this guy, a Trump impersonator outside Trump Towers. Whether he's there regularly or not, I have no idea, but he was fantastic and very funny. After having a bit of an explore, we found a little sports bar where we had a really nice lunch, before then going to the Harry Potter shop, having a bit of a walk around there, and then going back to the hotel getting changed and going out for dinner before starting our final day in New York, day five. So on to day five, our final day in New York, and what's a visit to New York without a visit to the Natural History Museum? Now we made sure that we booked our tickets in advance, which were great, so we were able to queue up at the entrance in the morning and literally be the first people into the museum. Our flight home was late in the evening, so it meant that we could go around the museum in the morning, and then we were able to go back to the hotel, pick our cases up, and go off back to the airport, and fly home, and arrive mid-morning of the following day, and that's exactly what we did. We had our last meal in New York at Bubba Gump Shrimp Co. in Times Square, and we thoroughly enjoyed our time. So hopefully this has given you an insight into what the perfect five days in New York could look like. If you've got any questions then please feel free to put them in the comments below and we'll come back to you but otherwise please do remember to like and subscribe to the channel so we can keep bringing you more and more content.